Hello friends, welcome to the course of Code Writer for RESTful API Development Using Silt Authentication. Inside this video, we will see Update Student API. If I back to editor, inside the last video, we have seen and completed all about single student data method. Now this time, we will work on Update Student method. So while working out on update student API, we need to pass data student ID into URL as well as form data. Form data contains the values either for all these columns like name, email, phone number and profile image. So whenever if we want to update all these informations, so all these columns should be passed inside body parameters. Otherwise, in case if we are interested to update only the profile image, so in that case, this field is going to contain a value and rest all the fields will be missing from body parameters. So step by step, we will see that how to create update student API. So before implementing the code logic inside this method, we will fetch the single student data on the basis of this student ID. So what I will do here, let's say student object equals to new student model and we will use find method so let's say student equals to student object and we will call find method not find all it's find method so here let's say student id so this student contains the value of existing data so i will copy that go here let's say if not empty it means the existing data of that student exists. Otherwise, we need to go inside this else block. Let's prepare a response. Response equals to, and here let's say status equals to false. Message, let's say no student data found, and data will be an empty array. Now go inside this if block, it means student accessed with this student ID. So what we have to do, now inside this if block, first we need to check that inside body parameters, how many values we are getting. For example, if we want to update all these columns inside body parameters, we'll have all these values. But in case, if we interested to update only the email value, so in case in body parameters, we'll have the email value only. Back to editor. Before adding code logic, let's say print r equals to student. If I save this change and this method will hit using put request type, I will go here, developments have already started. So what I will do, I will copy this URL, this is all about our single student API, open a new tab, paste it here. So after this API prefix, we need to change our route to update-student and in this URL we need to pass a student ID, so API forward slash update-student and one more thing that we need to use put request type. And if I pass let's say 300, but as we know that this ID does not exist, let's pass a known value. So let's say fourth number ID. So I will go, let's say 4, click on send button. And as you can see that we are getting some data and this is the single student data of this fourth number ID. So all is okay up to now. Go to editor, go to API controller class, let's remove this print R. So here let's say check for name value, it means inside body parameters we are getting the name value. So here let's say name equals to this request get var and inside this get var inside this let's say name and here let's say if each set name and also value is not equals to empty. So in that case, we need to update the existing data and existing data is coming inside this name key which is inside this array. So what we have to do here, let's say student because this is a variable which contains an array and inside that array we have all the existing values. 
so we need to update this name key so student name equals to the updated name value otherwise if it is empty so don't need to update any value now we need to repeat this step for email value so here let's say check for email value in this case let's say email email equals to let's say this request i will call get fair method and here let's say email and if i will copy this piece of code paste it here so in this case if the email value is set and also it is not empty so in that case the email value should be updated so i will copy this key this is our table key put it here and all we have to pass the email value now we introduce the same step with our phone number let's copy this piece of code put it here check for phone value we'll get inside this phone key this will be phone so if phone value is set and not equals to empty put it here and we need to update this phone value so copy that and put it here now next we need to check the image file means actually uploaded or not so here let's say that check for profile image value so in this case let's say image file equals to this request we'll call get file method and here let's say that image file will upload inside this key called profile image and this will this actually contains an object and inside this object will have all image properties now we need to next we need to fetch the image num from here so let's say image name equals to let's say image file and we'll call get name method so here from this object we are fetching only the image name so image name will get something called abc.png already we have discussed about this point inside our add student api now next as we know that if suppose we have updated our first number student with this image called abc.png and again we have uploaded with the same name for other student so this name will be replaced inside folder structure so instead of image replacement we need to generate a unique id of each value of image so what we have to do let's a new image name and before that let's actually separate these two values like abc and png so here let's say image arrays equals to we'll use explode function look at intellisense made to pass separator so inside this abc.png the separator is dot and we want to separate our image name value now this image arrays contains the value as abc comma and png now we want to retrieve this extension let's say new image name equals to let's say random and inside this random we'll use micro time let's pass true value and put a dot here and i will use the extension of image that is the last index value of this array so we'll use and function of php inside this and function we need to pass image arrays so automatically this and function will return the last index value so all these things will execute if we have the image uploaded so what we have to do here i will copy this image file and here let's say if not empty so if image uploaded then we need to execute all these steps otherwise it will be empty so go here put it here next we need to go inside this new image name and we need to upload inside our images directory so we have to use move method so if it's an image file and already we have discussed all about this move method the first value we need to pass the folder name so as we know that this images folder exist inside our public directory and once we upload and use this move method automatically the second value which will be the image name 
will be uploaded inside this images directory. So here, let's say new image name, go inside this if block, as block, so inside if block, let's prepare response and here, let's say status equals to false not false actually inside this if block image uploaded so status equals to true message let's say image uploaded but i think that this actually block will not be required because in this case we'll upload our updated image inside database as well so go inside this else block and here this is all about our field response so i will copy and put it here so status equals to false and in this case let's say failed to upload profile image so once we upload image successfully into our folder go inside this if block and here student because inside this student key also we have a profile image so we need to update the existing data so profile image and we need to update the existing value with images folder forward slash and with the new image name so successfully as we can see that once we upload our updated image into folder also we need to update the existing key value once we do all these things now finally here we are updating the name value email value phone number and here as well once we upload our updated profile image we are uploading or we are updating the existing profile image value so after this all of these if block if i go here and let's say print r if i type student hopefully this variable will contain the updated existing values go here inside postman so while calling this api put request type so i will change to post request type and remember if you go inside body i need to add method and inside this method i will use post request not post put request type and dynamically here we are changing the method type and this concept is known as method spoofing so the same api we are hitting using post request type but dynamically we are updating this method from post to put request type so inside this form data here let's say that we interested to update only the email value so this is old email value so put it here let's say rakesh underscore updated at the gmail.com so this time we are passing only the updated email value and rest all the values we want as same as it is click on send button now as you can see that we have all the old values and this time only we have our updated email value now in case if we interested to update one more field that is phone number so in this case let's pass some dummy value so this time we are updating the email value and phone number click on send button now we can see that these two values now updated now we interested to upload the updated profile image let's undo so in this case we are not going to upload any email and phone number only we want to update the profile image so profile image instead of text i will select file here click on choose file and from folder let's select this image and if i click on send button so here we have some error and the error is if i go here that rand expects exactly two arguments if I go here and I think that we have some error while generating the new image name. So in this case, instead of using rand, I will use random. Or instead of random, if I will use called round method, save this change, go here, click on send button. Now we can see that this time we are getting a updated profile image value. So all is ok, good to go with update query. So after these if blocks, after all these if blocks, go here instead of printr, here if student object and by the help of this object we will call 
update method and inside this update method will pass a set of data so before passing set of data look at intellisense the first value we need to pass the student id student id and the second value will be data and data is coming inside this student variable so inside this if block let's prepare response response equals to status equals to true message let's say student updated successfully and data will be an empty array and finally let's copy this failed block final this is for the failed block status equals to true not true it will be false and in this case instead of no student data found it will be failed to update student save these changes and finally we need to return that so after all of the ifs block let's return this respond created and inside this i will pass the response variable save all these changes go here so this time i am interested to update only the name and email value of this fourth number student id if i go here click on reload so we can see that the existing data of this fourth number student here now i will go and click on send button we can see student updated successfully if i go and reload now we can see that only the email value and phone number updated so successfully now by the help of this video now we have created one more method implementation and that is all about update student api method so in the next video we'll discuss some more different concepts so for this video session guys thank you for watching and have a great day